It's the Orioles on Masson and game two of the four-game set here at Camden Yards. And the Kansas City Royals in town coming away with an 8-2 win in the opener last night. For the Orioles, the race is on, obviously, as the games dwindle down and each one becomes a little more precious. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and welcome. One of the problems for the Orioles this year, at least discussed much, is the run differential. We went to the Jim Palmer Reader. Here's what we found. There was a little girl. She had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. When she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. Well, that's what the Orioles have had to deal with this year. Take a look at where they stand in ball games that are decided by a lot of runs. Losses by five runs tied for third. Losses by six tied for fifth. Losses by seven runs are tied for second. And losses by eight or more runs. They are tied for the most with five in the American League. That's why that run differential is somewhat misleading. Because when the Orioles lose, Jim, it tends to be in ball games that are blowouts. And then they come back and win all these one-run extra inning games. Yeah, well, they're winning all the games. They're both 21 and 6 in one-run games. One of all the games they never used to win. And I thought we were going to go to September song when we're only in August, you know, as the days dwindle well, down. So, well, anyway, with that all says, you know, really, I think when you're not a very good defensive ball club, uh, Rick Dempsey talking about it in the, the pregame show, talking about that's one thing you can bring to the bank every day as a ball club. So that's why Machado is playing at third base. Hopefully that'll tighten up the defense. But at the end of the day, you have a young pitching staff. You know, Matt is supposed to come back. He's in Norfolk. Marietta, elbow surgery after winning, what, 10 and 11 games the last two years. He's in Norfolk. Hunter been up and down. So again, this is a makeshift uh, pitching, uh, at least from a starting standpoint, the bullpen, one of the best in baseball. But again, if you don't defend well, you're going to give them extra outs. And when you play in the American League East, where you play the, the vast majority of your game, Gary, we know where that leads to. All big, right, we were runs. talking about uh, Miguel Gonzalez is going to make the start tonight. One of the things we're going to look at are the numbers comparing home and road starts for him. We'll do that when we come back. He hopes to get those numbers turned around here tonight against Kansas City in game two of this four game set baseball coming up Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Jeep. Jeep and the unique brand of freedom you'll find only in the full line of Jeep vehicles. Visit jeep.com to learn more. Partly cloudy skies as we get set for this ball game. Take a look at our train game time. Temperature 87 degrees. Rain is in the forecast, but it has not rained uh, since middle of the morning. Visit train.com for an independent train comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. 
Here's the starting lineup brought to you by Dodge for the Royals. Gordon Escobar, Mustakas, Butler, Perez, Hosmer, Francoeur, Getz, and Dyson. Dyson did not play last night. Billy Butler did and had an impact. See your authorized Dodge dealer and experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test drive or go to Dodge.com and check out their powerful lineup. And take a look at our AFC Intelligent Report. Visit AFCA.org, the Association for IT Pros. Well, Camden Yards Blues. Uh, Miguel uh, Gonzalez in his uh, seventh Major League start has yet to win here. ERA a little bit under seven runs a game. Part of that uh, one bad game against Tampa Bay uh, where he gave up seven runs. First inning struggles. He needs to get better in the first inning. And then uh, strike one, the difference between getting ahead. They hit 176. And uh, when he throws ball one, it goes all the way up to 328. So almost, what, about 150 point difference. And he's given up home runs here in this ballpark. That has been a problem for him. And uh, of recent vintage, they have come in the first inning. And that's what he's going to try and avoid because that's exactly what happened in the ballgame last night. He has allowed a home run to the leadoff batter in each of his first two home starts. Austin Jackson got one on July 15 with the Tigers. Desmond Jennings picked one up on July 25 for Tampa Bay. And here's another guy who can hit those kind of home runs. Alex Gordon will take the pitch. He led the ball game off with a leadoff homer last night on the second pitch of the ball game. It would be uh, the eighth leadoff homer that he has picked up in his career and third of the year. That one will miss up high and Gordon ahead on the count to an 0. Yeah, Way and Chen missed with a fastball away. The next one inside middle and Alex Gordon became a home run hitter. Three for five in the ball game last night for him. And that is a strike on the outside corner. And a two ball one strike count on Gordon. Happy to say as far as Wei and Chen is concerned at least at this point no negative results from being hit on the leg by that hard shot up the middle that caught him on the shin. Two one delivery is swung on and missed what Showalter said today the first reports indicate caught more of his calf than it did of the bone. Yeah I was talking to Rick Adair the uh, pitching coach and he said boy he would not leave the game after giving up four runs in the first inning. And again, that's how he got out of the first inning. Line drive off the shin. And got him on a tail away yeah. pitch. Yeah, he was fed so good. Uh, you know, he, he dueled with David Price down in Tampa Bay. Orioles won that game. Shut out. And there's the uh, the changeup he used so effectively. You can see the split fingers. It's a split finger changeup. And not only is it different speed in the low 80s, fastball around 91, 92, it has a lot of good late movement. And that's the key to a changeup. Here is Escobar. The shortstop last night at a two for five. He's got a three game hit streak. He will pop that one up in the infield. Catcher Weeders, third baseman, calling him off. And Machado will put it away for the end. Yeah, take a look at the Oriole defense and uh, McLouth, Jones, Marcakis, very mobile outfield for the Orioles. They do lead the American League in most errors. Uh, of course, not all these guys have been out there all year. Machado, Hardy, Kentania, a better meet moves around from third to first tonight. Mark Reynolds, at least initially, getting the night off, and then the Gold Glover, one of three that have won Gold Gloves: Jones, Marquez, and Matt Weeters. And there is uh, Manny Machado, second game at third base. Clouth getting his fourth start out in left field with the Orioles. Infield puts the switch on as Mustaka stands in. Mustaka last night had a two for four in the ball game. Number of left-handed hitters in this lineup. In fact, there are a total of five going against Gonzalez. Pitch up high. Lefty's a 255. Righty's only 205 against Gonzalez. And the count goes to 101. Mustakas, a little good season, 260. 25 doubles, 17 home runs. Pitch is going to miss on the inside, and it goes to 2 and 1. Now, he has really appearance for Gonzalez, by the way, against the Royals. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you, you sit on the bench last night, even though Chen, a left-hander, started, you let to learn a lot. And in fact, you know, again, 13 hits last night, seven of them extra base hits. So they put on a show offensively. What a nice off-speed pitch that was. Those seven extra base hits last night, four doubles, triple, two home runs, a season high for a ball club. The Royals who get a lot of extra base hits, especially in terms of doubles. And there's Butler, whom you... Just don't want to face any more times than you have to. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Mustakas will line that one to center field. It's an atom ball. 
One, two, three inning. Whole lot different than the way it started last night. Good one for Gonzalez. Marquez, Hardy, Davis will lead it off. And uh, for the Orioles looking to get back on the win streak after that five game streak was ended in the ball game last night. Take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Marquez, Hardy and Davis. Jones, Weeders and Benami. McClough, Shadow, Quintanilla. And Chris Davis this season the 18 homers 55 RBIs. And the AFC intelligent report uh, well keep the momentum their starters have been pitching well that's pretty much the key. Uh, because they are a good offensive team uh, on the ground ground ball pitcher about 60 percent and then May Day May Day back in May one and four. So that skews the numbers when you look at his seven and nine record has been pitching well as of late but ERA of over five runs a game and leading it off Nick Marquez who continues to pile up the numbers in the leadoff spot this season more hits than innings pitch not a good sign not a lot of walks 38. 1 0. Marquez will put that one in the air to left field. That's going to go into the seats for a foul ball and even the count up at one ball and one strike. Well, Gary, he has all the pitches. I was talking to Ned Yost, the manager of the Royals, and he said sometimes he gets cutter crazy. But you've heard that about a lot of pitchers. Beckett the other day, eight runs, three home runs against the Rangers, all of them on cut fastballs. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way. They've asked him to really reduce the number of cutters thrown. He slipped out there in that. Finish actually went right down in the dirt. Checking the uh, shoes and also the landing spot. That's where you could end up tweaking something. Yeah, watch him uh, again. You get over your front side, he just goes down. That front foot slips. You want to get over the front side. It looks like it, it maybe just hit a little bit of a clay patch. 2 1 delivery on the way, and that's taken down low. And the count goes to three balls and one strike on Nick Marquez. And you talked about the early rain here in Baltimore. Sometimes you leave that tarp on a little bit longer. If you, after a ball game, you can hear him going back and tamping all the, the clay in there. Ow. Oh, that one caught Marquez. And he'll take a little walk here. Well, three and one hitters count, and he's trying to get a little bit more. And there's that two seam fastball, and that boy, that's right in the happy zone. But fouls it straight down at his instep. Mm. You know, even last night, Nick going 0 for 2. Of course, he's been red hot. Uh, you know, hitting through over 300 of 350 ish since the All Star break. But even, and he's the, on. even the, uh, the two outs were line drive. He hit three balls right on the nose last night, no hits. Nice leadoff walk for Mark Agus. So very again a very good outfield. Gordon who won a Gold Glove, 20 assists last year. Frank Cor usually up there in the mid-teens. Uh, the right fielder Dyson he can go get him. Mustak is playing very well. Escobar among the leaders gets Hosmer again a big rangy first baseman, and then the youngster, 22-year-old uh, Salvi Perez doing the catching for the Royals. J.J. Hardy stands in with a leadoff man on, and Hardy will take it for a strike. By the way, in Marquez, that is going to be his 32nd walk of the year. He has struck out only 43 times this season. So Nick 
more of those numbers that place him in that leadoff spot where he has been so effective. J.J. Hardy had an 0 for 3 in the ball game last night. He's only 3 for 19 lifetime against Hoshaver. 0 1 delivery, and there's that sweeping pitch that's going to miss outside. And the count goes to 1 1. Now you look at Luke's lifetime numbers against the Orioles, and this will be his third start this year. What, 1 and 5? ERA over six runs a game. There's his pitcher, Dave Island. He's Come not fared well in this ballpark no. either. He's gone 0 and 3 here in four starts and an ERA of almost eight here at Camden Yards. One ball, one strike count on Hardy, and he'll pop that one up. First base. Hosmer didn't see it at first. He's being called off and reaches up and hauls it in. And the tall guy gets it. Gets was right <laughs> behind him and had asked for it and thought he was going to make the play. One away. Yeah, we saw the when the Mariners were in earlier in the week. Uh, Kawasaki lost, lost one uh, at shortstop. Nobody helped him out. He, he just never saw the ball. You know, again, a cloudy night. It was a clearer day that uh, that evening. But again, you can see when Luke uh, O'Chaver's got his stuff, you can even do a fastball hitter get away with fastballs and hitters counts. Here is Chris Davis. Davis. Hitting in the three spot DHing. He's five for 12 with a home run lifetime off O'Shaver. And with a runner at first, takes it away. The Orioles are trying to take advantage of the fact O'Shaver's issued his first walk to a leadoff batter in the ball game all season long. And it's Marquecas who got it over there at first base. Well, the irony, Gary, is that he throws 60% ground balls. He put one on the ground, maybe a chance to advance the runner, but the pop up doesn't do anything. Here's the 1 0 delivery, and he rips it, and it is going to go foul. Way back. Souvenir for those least expecting. And a one ball, one strike count. O'Shaver home run rise has given up 13 home runs on the season. Seven of those have been hit by right handers. Pretty high average, 280 overall. And uh, the Orioles. We'll look to get to him early in this ball game. Arkega saw first 1 1 delivery. That's going to go the other way. Gordon is there. Runner halfway will go back two down. Well, take a look. And again, we're talking about former number one draft choice. You can see again uh, the degree of breaking balls as the years go uh, just get higher. You can see the fastball numbers have come down. A lot of that's fastball cutters. At 60, so everything else has gone up. And I don't, you know, usually you'd think, well, that's going to help. But again, higher ERA than last year. Seven and nine. Last year, 11 and 11 on the season. So I'm not sure it's really helping. But again, his, his credentials were, Gary, he was a power pitcher. Getting a little bit away from that. Now Jones up. Adam Jones, four game hit streak. With the one for four in the ball game last night. He's eight for 20 with a home run lifetime off Hoshaver. And Jones will be wailing away here in the first inning with a two down and a runner on at first base. Very little breeze here tonight blowing gently towards left field to start. Not a bad evening at all to start this ball game with some overcast but still a lot of blue sky. Here's the 0 1 delivery. Jones will take it down low. Perez with the attempted pickoff and close because Marquecas <laughs> almost lost his balance going back in. Yeah almost skidded right off the bag. Snap throw. I mean, you can see no batter, right hander, perfect uh, ability. Again, a young catcher, good catch and throw guy for somebody his age. And again, this team, uh, when we talk about the Royals, six and 15 start, and part of it was the fact that he tore a meniscus and was was out most of the early months of the season. Adam Jones, he'll chop that one towards the middle. Flip to second, not in time. It'll be a base hit. Adam Jones is on. Good try by Escobar to get it to Getz for the force out at second base. The only play he was going to have. Couldn't get it there. Two on, two down. Yeah, well, we saw him make about three plays last night that took hits away. This one and an attempt of it. And again, because he's going towards center field, couldn't get much on it. And again, uh, again, you get that good secondary lead. Nick Marquez is able to do that and beats the throw to second. So not only do you have a couple of guys on for the, one of the hottest guys in the lineup, but you also uh, get a base hit for Adam Jones. So John side continues his hit streak to five games and here is uh, Weeders. Weeders seven for his last 14. Three home runs three doubles eight RBIs over the last three ball games. 
And he gets the chance here with runners on at first and second and two down. Those shavers been hit hard in these situations. 295 with runners in scoring position. 16 home runs this season. Tied for third most on the Orioles. And he's been putting them out to both left and right going where he's been pitched and driving the ball. Yeah equal opportunity home run hitter. Um, two to center field the other night against the Mariners hitting left handed. Breaking ball is going to miss inside. Weeders against Toshaver. Three hits and 11 at bats. Lifetime. There are the numbers we were talking about over the last three ball games for Matt Weeders. A little battered and bruised from last night according to his manager. Buck Showalter said after the game had some knuckles that were pretty roughed up and he took one shot right on the collarbone in the ball game last night. Breaking ball take it inside and a two ball one strike count. Yeah, if I'm Lou Kochaver, I'm a little nervous the way he took those two curveballs. Obviously not fool. And again the way a hitter approaches your stuff usually gives you a pretty good indication if he's seeing the ball out of your hand. Really two good takes on two pretty good curveballs just under the zone. Two ball one strike delivery to Weeders. That's going to be in the outside corner. Matt hitting 230 with runners in scoring position on the season. O'Shaver trying to get out of this without giving up a first inning run. Yeah, we'll see if Bill Walkie will give the pitchers a, a couple of inches off the outside corner. Because that one was in the neighborhood of that outside corner. Ari Kekas off second base. Jones off first. Here's the 2 2. And fouled back into the screen. The outfield plays Weeders the other way. Most of the teams are doing this now, and he's batting left handed. The center fielder moves over towards left. The uh, charts showing how he has taken the ball the other way more than last, much more yeah, than I mean, last. Look at, look at that gap. But again, he was late on that 93 mile per hour fastball. One of the numbers, Matt hitting 230 with runners in scoring position, uh, Hochaver at 295, which is a high number. 2-2 delivery on the way, and that one's in the air to center field. It'll send Dyson back. He'll get there easily and uh, put it away. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two are left on base, one complete here at Camden Yards. No score. Presented by Luna. Call for the Luna Double and get your second room of flooring free. 877 241 Luna. Miguel Gonzalez going after victory number four. Three and two with that 3.8 earned run average. Coming into the ball game, he's coming off a no decision outing against Tampa Bay. No runs, two hits over seven innings. Battling David Price in that ball game that was scoreless through nine innings. His uh, win came the game before that against the Yankees in a solid six and two thirds inning performance. Yeah, it's one of those team wins. You know, Price really on a roll, and anytime, you, and you know that when you face a guy like David Price down in Tampa, hitters nightmare because it's a pitcher's ballpark. You better pitch well, and he certainly did. Gave him a chance to win, and they eventually won it in extra innings. Leading it off will be Billy Butler. 
Butler just absolutely destroying the Orioles, hitting uh, 458 with three home runs this season. Designated hitter up among the top three in almost all of the DH numbers. Just having a very big year for Kansas City. And there are the numbers against the Orioles this year. Overall, 303. He's had 23 home runs on a pace to hit 34. If he continues that pace, it would be a couple shy. The all time home run mark for Kansas City was set in 85 by none other than Steve Longball Belboni. <laughs> that was 85 when he hit 30, 36 of them. Billy Butler, here's the 1 1 delivery on the way, and that ball did he go? They check it first base, and the answer is no. Yeah, nice little breaking ball, and that's what he was saying. Uh, again, had a chance to hit for the, the cycle, and mm -hmm. Lindstrom threw him a couple of these. He struck out, and then he said, I don't know, Darren O'Day, does any right hander ever hit him? <laughs> all, he needed well was a, all he needed was all he needed. He just needed a single to go with the, the home run, the double, and the triple. Here's the 2 1 delivery on the way, and that'll catch the outside corner. And a two ball, two strike count. What I like about Miguel Gonzalez, in fact, I like a lot of things, strike thrower, but he's not afraid to throw fastballs and fastball counts because when he's pitching well, he can do what he just did, and that is locate on the outside corner of the plate. 2 2 delivery, and that'll be jam shot. Machado. Plenty of time. the time yeah. he had to make that throw. And he took a look, and that's what you like about young players. And you know, I made 22 errors down at uh, A ball and Double A. And then Gary Kendall, his Double A manager, actually Double A this year, he said, "You know, sometimes focus plays, but right here, awareness." He takes a look right about now. He sees Butler's. You know, he got jammed, doesn't run well anyway, and just he had all kinds of time to crow hop your way across the infield and make an accurate throw. The Machado makes the play at third base. Here's Perez. Alvador Perez is doing the catching. Lifts it in the air to right field. That's good wood. Marquecas looking and goodbye. Home run. Perez delivers the long ball that Kansas City has so rarely hit this season. They now have picked up three here in the first two games of this series. Home run number seven for the catcher and a one nothing lead for the Royals. Apo Taco, that's what he calls it. Hit one of those in Chicago. Big, strong, 22 year old kid, and like a man shot. So again, he just he can just flies out to, to the flag court. That's what you can do here at Camden Yard. Short porch. And it's not like it's a horrible pitch. It's on the outside portion of the plate. He just tremendously strong. Osmer takes a strike. You saw a Nissan pitch track. Get the Nissan Summer Saving Days. The event ends September 4th. Visit choosenissan.com or see your local Nissan dealer. Eric Osmer now one for four in the ball game last night. Foul back and he got a rip. That'll be home run number 10 coming against Gonzalez this season. And it is the fifth to be hit by right handers and the Perez the lefty. Uh, the right hander rather getting his seventh and the pitch will be taken up high. That has been the problem that has struck Gonzalez here in these starts at home. That's the fourth home run he has surrendered in home starts this season. One two delivery is going to be taken away here at home. He's got the 0 2 record with a 7 8 ERA. His strikeout totals compared on the road are down. The home runs total of six in the away games and got him on the swinging <laughs> strike. Now take a look again uh, Gary what you were talking about right here away. I mean look at the average 194 140 points higher ERA but five runs maybe five and a half runs so all the numbers are way better. But again uh, the Orioles pitch as a team much better on the road. And that is the difference for the Orioles really in their home road record. Yeah, I mean they went 32 and 25 on the road one game over 500 and ERA pretty significant 439 here 380 on the road. But this is a hitters park. And the ball put up in the air. Whoa. <laughs> and nobody could else could get there. So Gonzalez will make the play himself. Frank Corey is retired on the pop up to the pitcher. Perez gets the home run and the Royals get the lead.
Orioles Legends Celebration Series is back tomorrow. Eddie Murray will be honored with that larger-than-life Ron Scott on the new Centerfield Picnic Area. The gates will open at 5, ceremonies 5.15. All fans get the replica Eddie Murray sculpture. That is tomorrow. And the gates open at 5, and again, 5.15 for the ceremony. There he is. Covered up. Just in case it rains. <laughs> Eddie will not get wet. Eddie will have that <laughs> unveiled tomorrow. We hope you'll join in. <laughs> Foul ball, Wilson Betamy. Betamy back in the lineup and getting the start at first base as the eternal juggling continues for Buck Showalter, who is adamant about keeping everybody involved in the ball game. So Mark Reynolds is not playing, at least to start tonight. Down to first, fair ball. So far, right button push. Francoeur going over to get it. Betamid heads to second base, and he will go in with an easy stand-up double to lead off the second inning. Yeah, if you're Buck Showalter, uh, again, uh, it, he looks at how you're hitting right-handers over 300 at 304. 11 of the 12 home runs. He hits it on the end, but hooks it over the bag, and Francoeur knows it's going to be a double. He's got a great throwing arm out in right field, so it's a game of matchups. Now Nate McClouth after the 18th double of the season for Benamit will try and bring him home. The Orioles are going to play sacrifice here. McClouth getting the start in left field. Moustakis has moved in at third base on the grass and close to Sagan Escobar the shortstop to hold the runner. Willie Bunt. He does and he drags it down to first foul. It's a little right again. Yeah a little unusual in the American League to uh, to give up an out in the second inning. They certainly think that's going to be the case. There is Buck Showalter, the Orioles skipper. And again, especially when you have a rookie that has four at bats on deck. So maybe Bug just has an urge. He knows. He has a sense, a gut feeling. Cloth has no sacrifices in the five games of the Orioles and none with the 34 in the National League. Let's see what he does. They're still playing the bunt. But Klaus not bunting. Ground ball towards second base. It'll get the runner moved up. Same result. Play made by Getz. And uh, there's a productive at bat. Well, let's see how Ned Yost and the Royals play as, as the rookie. Manny Machado comes to the plate. Ground ball pitcher. Young hitter. Infield hit in that uh, curve ball to hit up the gap and then hustled it into a triple last night. He had one chance with a runner in scoring position last night and went 0 for 1, but did have the 2 for 4, of course, in the ball game for Manny Machado in his Major League debut. Now an RBI opportunity. Machado will take the strike on the outside corner. Pretty dramatic entrance last night. First career Major League hit, a triple that came in the fifth inning, and he blasted it up the middle and made it into third base with no play put on him. Now a chance for his first major league RBI. He scored a run last yeah. night on a sack fly. Strike well, called on the breaking ball 0-2. Yeah, and Will Smith got him out on the first time with a curve ball and then got one up in that fifth inning. That's the pitch he hit. But those are about as good a curve balls as you can throw. And those are the first two that uh, Luke has thrown over tonight. Infield is drawn in now. And the pitch is taken away. And a one ball two strike count of Machado. So they had the infield back until they got the two strike count. And then Ned Yost deciding he wanted to move him in maybe and try and cut that run off. Better meet an average runner speed wise at third base and a short lead. Here's the one two delivery Machado ground ball runner not going. Escobar makes the play gets the out and there are two down. Now if you're Manny Machado after those two curve balls you had to sit on the fastball and uh, he threw you another one. Somehow be able to make contact, but the sinker got him. Pretty good pitch from Pochiever. Kentaneva will come to the plate. The number nine hitter. He did not play in the ball game last night against Hoshaver. He's got a one for three in his career. Another left-handed batter in the lineup with the lefties with that 289 batting average against the Royals right-hander. Better meet at third. Lead off double. The Orioles now down to just one out to work with to get him in. Anthony will take it up high for a ball. Betterment will need to be alive at third. Hochaver is on court seven wild pitches this season. Yeah, well, that's the curveball. You spike that hook, it's really tough to keep in front of you. So he'll be led off at third base with 
DeMarlo Hale taping an eye on the third baseman. Timeout taken by Perez, the catcher at the plate. It's tough to get a lead here because Mustakas, the third baseman, is staying in. Quintanilla with some good speed, so he's protecting against the bunt. So trying to get a lead over there is a little tough. Yeah, everybody may be a step shorter because of his speed. Swung on and missed, and a one ball, one strike count. Yeah, pretty good fastball again. And again, remember the numbers. And uh, you know, a lot of times, how do you hit in this clutch? Well, Omar struggling two for 16. How do you pitch in the clutch? Oh, Cheever again, 295. And one thing about Omar, what, 391 against right handed pitching. What a number that is. 1 1 delivery on the way to him, breaking ball. There's one that gets stopped by Perez. Air with the Orioles playing in his 19th game. Kentony has hit 305. He's had three doubles, a home run, six RBIs. He had a 257 batting average coming over in the from the National League. He had only a 70 at bats in the National League. He's already at 59 here with the Orioles. Well, looks like a very, very solid player, both offensively and defensively. Well, ever taking a long time in Perez trying to get the signs down and or they're playing a little cat and mouse game here with Quintanilla. Betamy getting off third base as far as he can. And the stock is staying as close to the bag as he can get. And the pitch is going to be away and a three ball one strike count. Hoshaver coming into this ball game has a career best walk to strikeout ratio. He has struck out to, he gets 2.5 strikeouts per walk. That's the best number that he's ever had in his career. Now whether he ends with that or not we'll see but right now it is. 3 1 delivery on the way and that ball in the air to the gap right center only the speed of Dyson and goodbye home run. Run as fast as you want you won't get that one. And today uh, delivers the homer to RBIs and the Orioles have a two to one lead. Now yeah, there's a veteran hitter working the count laying off the curveball to get to a hitter's count and then not missing his pitch. Pretty much what good hitting's about. And that's a nice little record. 53 and 29 when hitting a home run. Antonia's home run is going to be his second as an Oriole. It is his third overall of the season. He had one with the Mets. Here's Nick Markakis. Base is empty. Well, take a look. Three and one. He threw a ball by him, but not this time. Took a little bit off. The ball's in the middle of the plate. Boy, and it sails out of here. You think maybe that's going to be a gapper. What about six rows up? That one uh, directly to Gordon, and uh, he's got it. The Orioles, though, pick up the big two out home run. Two RBIs. Quintanilla delivering the homer. O'Shaver has now surrendered 14 on the year, and the Orioles lead. Orioles baseball on mass and brought to you by Verizon Fios. Introducing Verizon Fios Quantum Speed, internet twice as fast as anything America has ever seen. And by Antwerpen Auto. 
When Jack says yes, you pay less at Antwerp and Hyundai, Nissan, Toyota, and Howard County Auto Park. Visit JackSaysYes.com today. And by 5-Hour Energy, 5-Hour Energy fixes tired fast. The Orioles with the 2-1 lead here in game two of this four-game set. Quintanilla's home run. Here's Getz, who will take the pitch. He'd like to have a home run. It's been a while. He has not homered in 896 at bats. His last home run, July of 2009. He was with the White Sox, and he got it against his teammate now, Jeremy Guthrie. Does get a base hit, though. Getz is on with a leadoff single here in the third inning. Maryland Lottery strike at Rich contestant of the game, Vicky Cherry from Elton. Vicky has already won 500, and for every strikeout the Orioles pitch, you get 100 more from the Maryland Lottery. See how you can turn non winning strike at Rich scratch offs into cash. Enter to win Grado's prizes. MDLottery.com slash strike at Rich today. Orioles will play the bunt. Machado's moved in. Dyson with tremendous speed, hitting in the number nine slot. Gets with good speed on at first base. Yeah, they get the, the speedsters. That's the bunt. Machado's going to have to go to first and will get the out there. Sacrifice for Dyson moving Gets down to second base. So a little small ball early in this game. Oh, you love to get outs in the American League designated hitter. You don't have a pitcher coming up every nine batters. So a little bit unconventional in the sense, but. I've never managed. I just kind of watch the game. You'd love to manage. But I'd love to be pitching when they give me an out in the third inning. Because <laughs> you only get 27 of them. I mean, Earl Weaver used to just talk about that. I, I, we all know about the three run home runs. But it's true. You only get 27 out. Yep. You just gave one away in a way. Now you do get a guy in scoring position. And Gordon will take the pitch down low for a ball. Gordon struck out his first time up. Gets on at second base. The Orioles have the two to one lead in the ball game and a chance here for Gordon with the 289 average with runners in scoring position to pick up an RBI. 1 0 pitch to him. Gordon had a reach for it and just chopped it foul right at the plate. One ball, one strike. Kentonia, by the way, I was just looking, is he came into this season and had only three major league home runs, period, in over 220 games. He's got three major league home runs this year in 47 ball games. So clearly a power hitter in the making there. Just kidding. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, I could see it. <laughs> Here's the 1 1 delivery lifted in the air right to Marquecas. Runner halfway will go back. And another a little off speed pitch. So we are seeing Miguel Gonzalez other than the fly ball home run that Perez hit to the opposite field. You don't really know. I mean, he's not afraid to throw the fastball, but he will pitch backwards where in fastball counts. Uh, and we saw it last night what the four runs on the four hits early on were all on fastball. So he paid attention. Slow the bat down with some change ups. Now the runner at second and there are two away and that will bring up Escobar. Escobar. 257 runners in scoring position trying to get this one done with two outs. Miguel Gonzalez delivers to him on the outside corner. Well, take a look, a young player, and look at what he's done. Again, uh, more mature, more at bats. What well, takes about 1,500 to 2,000. And uh, last night in that first inning, so you can see uh, up 120 points in the last three years. So you'll think maybe he won't get a fastball to hit here if, if Miguel can uh, somehow do it. Or if you do, you just make sure it's not in the middle of the plate because that's how he started. Uh, his first at bat last night after the home run just ripped one into left field. Escobar with the one ball, one strike count and two down. Runner being held close at second. Quintanilla moving in on him. Here's the 1 1 delivery, and that will miss inside. All of these Royals getting their first look at Miguel Gonzalez, and obviously the opposite true as he faces Kansas City for the first time. Two ball, one strike count. Outfields moved in a couple of steps on Escobar. Here's the 2 1 delivery. And again, trying to work inside, misses it. And the count goes in his favor. 3 1. Yeah, trying to stay away from the fastball. Just kind of a cement mixer slider. Didn't really break much, but did go down. Kind of lack of velocity allowed that. And 
I don't think Rick Adair doesn't know that Escobar has that kind of number against fastballs. That was the Oriole pitching coach. 3 1 delivery on the way, and that one is there for a strike. Yeah, just put a little wrinkle on it, and that's what he did. So Escobar has hit 423 against the Orioles this year. They have some outlandish numbers in this lineup Butler, Escobar, Francoeur against the Orioles in the six games played, which have been split, by the way, three and three. Here's the 3 2 delivery and taken, and he is on. So the first walk, first and second, two down. On Sunday, all youngsters 14 and under at the 135 game against these Royals are going to get a chance to run the bases after the game. You can have a great summer afternoon at the yard and help the kids live out a big league dream they'll never forget. Get your tickets in advance, 888-848-BIRD. Go to Orioles.com. That's going to be on Sunday for the final of four games in this series. Tommy Hunter, Bruce Chen, scheduled starters in the afternoon game Sunday. Chris Tillman and Luis Mendoza scheduled as starters in tomorrow night's game. Two on, two down, Mustakis. Mustakis popped out his first time up. So as the Orioles were looking for a two out base hit, so are the Royals here in this situation. Mustakis, 263 runners in scoring position. The pickoff with Hardy moving in behind the runner, not in time. Gets back to the bag. It could be G E T apostrophe S yes, or G E T S or G E T Z. In any event, he got back to the bag. Oh, one count. <laughs> okay. It's good to be in your own little world once yeah, in a while. It's wow. pleasurable. Nobody bothers you. Pitch is taken inside. And a one ball, one strike count. Yeah, we started this <laughs> this uh, telecast with a rhyme, and now there's no rhyme or reason. Yeah, whatever you say. <laughs> well, we, You're the leader. We like to go to that Jim Palmer book, that <laughs> yeah. Land of Nod. One and one on Moustakas. Oh, is it ever? <laughs> <laughs> Infield with the big uh, move put on for him to pull. The pitch will be taken away. Yeah, not a real good one. The good splitter change goes down. That one kind of went side to side. So you have to understand that what Miguel Gonzalez does well, at least when he's pitching well, is that he'll really mix up his pitches. And as he progresses through the lineup, we're going to show you some numbers. He will throw less fastballs and more breaking stuff. Two one delivery down to first. That is a foul ball. Close. Yeah, very close. Almost over the bag. Chris Guzzioni, the first base umpire, right on the chalk line. Well, Mistakis with a, a, a double down the right field line actually pulled the ball very well last night. And again, you know, their number one draft choice, they just have a bevy of them. It's unbelievable how many guys they have have, have signed or even traded for that are number former number one guys. And Mistakis, one of them, one of the best high school hitters in the 2007 draft. He went about what? He went second and that was Matt Wieters. He went sixth. The Orioles picking Matt out of Georgia Tech. Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way. Slug on a miss. Third strikeout for Gonzalez. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two are left on base, bottom of the third Kelly.
Back here at Camden Yards for the Orioles. This is the final series they're going to play against Kansas City, this four-game set. It's a dangerous one. Kansas City is a ball club that's putting itself together for next year and the year after. Jim talking about their young stars. The Orioles last night taking the 8-2 loss, the two-run homer off Hoshaver by Quintanilla, giving the Orioles the 2-1 lead here in this ball game for Miguel Gonzalez looking for his fourth win, and the Orioles trying to buck the trend. Because Kansas City, when they score first, 37 and 15. Now they have a very good bullpen and uh, not much of a clutch situation last night because they had the big lead. But if they do get the lead, they can be very effective. And the starting pitching, four out of the last five uh, starts for them. I mean, it's only a sample, small sample of work, but it's been very good. Off the end of the bat, a Q shot. And Hardy is retired. Hoshi ever getting over to cover. One away. Tonight's Mass and Mobile word of the day is gold glove. That's gold as in glove. Text gold glove 29292 for your chance to enter to win a meet and greet with Adam Jones. Two more chances to play. The more you watch Mass and the more chances you'll have to win. So gold glove. Four on the field tonight. Not bad. No. Orioles have a couple. Yeah, well, they have three actually. Marquecas, Marquecas. Jones, and Weeders. And then uh, Alex Gordon won his first gold glove. 20 assists last year in left field. Two of the best corner outfielders in the game, and Gordon and Frank Coor are playing here for the Kansas City Royals. Chris Davis flied out to left field his first time up, and the breaking ball is taken for a strike. Designated hitter, an 0 for 4 in the ball game last night. He has put up some big numbers, though, against Toshaver. A couple of home runs, foul back, and a one ball, one strikeout. Yeah, it looks like Chris Davis is uh, maybe going to strike out already 115 strikeouts more than Luke Scott, but he's kind of those streaky guys. In April and May over 300 and then down in the, you know, the, the lower twos and but again the power numbers and that's what Luke was able to do here and hit both righties and lefties. One two delivery is going to be away and Ho Shaver will go two balls and two strikes out of Tennessee where he grew up. Played his baseball and uh, became the first ever number one pick from the University of Tennessee. 2 2 delivery on the way, a little late on a fastball, foul the other way. Davis 2 and 2. He really swung to protect on that <laughs> yeah. one. Well, we've seen uh, Hochever Chaver is, is, is much better down in the zone. That's why, again, the Kentonia, he got a ball in the middle of the plate, and that's a home run. But right there, I mean, that's Got a little him. cutter that he starts off the outside corner. So, quality pitch, read the bat, a little late on the fastball, as you mentioned, Gary. And watch this. Look at the target. How do you miss that target? A big guy, but he gets the glove down. That's what you want if you're pitching. Oteva records his first strikeout, two down here in the third inning. Adam Jones, a base hit his first time up. Jones now a couple of hits and five at bats. So far in this series, the Orioles looking to improve on a record that's won over 500 here at home, 28 27. They come in five and a half games behind the Yankees who won their ball game yesterday. Oh, wow. curveball. That's the, yeah. the 10th hit batter this season by O'Shaver. Well, hot night. And watch it right here. He just doesn't get on top of it, so all it does is spin. Just couldn't pull it down. Came out of the hand a little bit uh, early and right in the hip. If you're ever going to get hit with a pitch, 77 is a lot better than 93. So Hochaver with two down with a hit batter puts one on. He hit uh, seven last year, all year long, already up to 10 this season. And Weeders gets the opportunity with two down and will take the pitch for a strike. Weeders with a three game hit streak. Helped by the two for three he had in the ball game last night. Flied out his first time up in this game. No shave of the stretch. Pretty good lead over there for Jones. Leaning. Not going. Pitch away. Good job, though, to draw his attention. Well, take a look again. I mean, this is <laughs> lately. Home run average. Kind of get Ruthian right there. Average up. Home runs up. As you mentioned, hitting him right-handed, hitting him left-handed, and he catches. 
And that is hard to do in this weather. At this point of the season. Well you really got to be a strong tough guy both physically and mentally. To do what Matt Wieters does or any catcher in the American League especially a guy like. Matt. He does almost all of it. Obviously getting a day off uh, a week usually. Playing in his 102nd game. Tonight. One ball one strike delivery there goes Jones swung out a miss throw Perez it's there and he's out. No runs no hits no errors and nobody left Perez throws out 43 percent of base stealers he adds to that number right there. Field advantage, visit MLB.com forward slash fan guide for a chance to win a VIP experience for two this year at MLB's World Series, presented by Scott's, the official lawn care company of MLB. Major League Baseball released its postseason schedule today. The wild card games, both American and National League, going to be played on October 5. There is no longer any rule that says the wild card can't play within its own division. And uh, so you could have an Eastern wild card against the number one team whatever any it's based on record solely now. And if there's a tie for a division championship there's going to be a one game playoff. The division series will get underway on October 6th. The league championship series October 13 and the World Series even though they tried not to do it could go into November. There's a game seven that'll be played on November 1st. Yeah, wait till they go uh, four out of seven on the division one yeah. year, which would be a fairer test if they ever get to that point. Billy Butler, they will if they can figure out a way to squeeze the games <laughs> in without going into December. <laughs> well, yeah. A little turkey. Let's talk turkey, turkey here, yes. at, here at the ballpark. <laughs> yes. Why not? Billy Butler grounded out his first time up. Butler, the DH, the 0 1 delivery to him. Great. Fist job right there. Quintanilla will make the play, and Butler is retired. Tuesday, the Orioles open a three game series against the Red Sox. Every Tuesday is Ollie's Bargain Night, presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet. Upper reserve seats only $9 in advance. Back your birds and enjoy a very affordable night out at Camden Yards. 888 848 Bird. Go to Orioles.com. Yeah, that's twice in a row that uh, Miguel Gonzalez has been able, able to get in on the fist of Billy Butler. Real good pitch. And of course, Perez was out over the plate and hit a fly ball home run. See, so again, trying to get in, and it is very difficult to get in early because you just don't know, especially when you have a little open stance, that left leg a little bit farther away. He's a long way off the plate. 22 year old catcher will foul that one back in a yeah. one ball, one strike count. And then he gets a hanging slider, and he's wondered why I'm not two for two with two home runs. Boy, what a good swing he had at this slider that stayed up. So powerful, even when that pitch is a good deal away from him. We saw him drive the opposite field home run for his seventh of the season in his first at bat. He can reach out there and let it go. Perez with the 1 1 delivery and another good jam shot goes to third, and Machado dropped it up with it and is going to get the out. 
Yeah, Perez doesn't run well, but if you don't run hard, because he thought it was routine. Well, it was routine. I mean, this ball's right off the fist. All you got to do is catch it. But here's the heads up play. Quick throw, strong throw. Not a lot of speed. And playing, oh, I wish I was a step far faster, and I'm not. Interesting is minor league coach uh, for Machado talking about the errors he made at third base and he did make some saying it was a matter of focus. Simply a little lackadaisical at times and balls that like that that a routine he started to make some bad plays he said most of his errors basically on focus their errors where he took a playoff here and there errors he can avoid by just playing every pitch Gary Kendall saying that. Well what did Derek Jeter at shortstop make and uh, there you go he needs to work on that he's got enough arm we just saw that got enough tools defensively 20 years and 35 days old. So yeah that's what you sometimes yeah. you expect. Pass hurt. Right to Mark Kekas and he's got it. Good inning Gonzalez retires the side in order he has done that now two of the four innings Orioles lead it to the one. Orioles baseball on mass and brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network, AT&T, where you think possible. And by Bacardi, from the heart of Charles, what? Charred Oak Barrels, the smoothest spice rum has arrived, Bacardi Oak Heart. Ooh, kind of surprised me there. I got to thinking about it. I got all jumbled up. Beautiful sunset time here in Baltimore. Got on fire with it. Charred. Charred Oak Barrels. Orioles with the 2 1 lead, 2 3 0 for the Orioles, 1 2 0 for the Royals. Matt Wieters left standing at the altar when uh, Jones got caught stealing to win the third inning. So he'll start the AB all over again. 1 0 delivery to him, and Wieters the other way. Gordon. Yeah, you don't want to mess around with this guy. He had to hit it. Not that Dyson can't go get him or Frank Corrin right, but. A gilded glove out there. What an infielder who's turned into yeah. one of the really outstanding outfielders in baseball. That's Alex Gordon. Well, he he embraced it. You know, I, again, I mentioned this many times. Ever since he came up, former again another number one draft choice. But uh, I look at George Brett. Of course, Brett could play anywhere, but he played third base. And, and the one thing, when you're a young kid and you know you struggle, you, you some terrific years, came up early and actually did well in the big leagues, and then struggled. Better meet Dyson. But to me that shows not only uh, athletic ability but but character that you'll go out there and you'll work and uh, you know every time I see B.J. Surhoff come to the ballpark I you know came up number one draft choice as a catcher put him at third base Sammy Palazzo worked with him became a terrific third baseman then he went to left field became one of the better left fielders and that just doesn't happen by accident it's all about work ethic and again the commitment to do that. I was thinking Robin Yao to yeah, well, Gold Glove winner. He both. had to go to center field because of the arm injury. Yeah, yeah. Both Gold Glove and the infield and the outfield. Here's Nate McLeod. 
couple of quick outs on the fly balls. McLeod grounded out his first time up. Quintanilla, the home run, his second of the year, second inning. Counting for the Orioles, two runs. Home run by Perez in the uh, second inning, the Kansas City catcher, accounting for their runs. The Orioles, 48% of the runs. The homers, the reason for Kansas City. It is under 30%, but Kansas City's had three home runs already in this series. Yeah, another guy that uh, was a really good outfielder was Darren Erstead. Yeah. What have 240 hits one year? Oh, clobbered another one, but that's going to be foul. That's way back there. That's two souvenirs those people have gotten in that section where not a lot of baseballs are hit. Well, it doesn't take long for me to, when I watch the at bats by Nate McLeod, to realize he's a much better low ball hitter. And you could see right there the ball down, he gets to. The ball around the letters. If you swing at it, he's, he doesn't quite get to it. And McLeod had one down there that he couldn't get to because he got jammed. And the underhead toss by Hosmer will do it in a one-two-three inning, and that is the first official one-two-three that's been had by O'Shea. Back. Torn tendons and a pitching elbow. 2010, the doctor said it was the worst elbow damage they had ever seen on an athlete. He's back with Atlanta. He's 4 and 1. He's had a 1 4 1 ERA and he pitches Sunday night. Miguel Cabrera, triple crown. Kari Stremski, 67, the last one to do it. He's first in RBIs. He's tied for fourth at home run, second in batting average. And a high school tournament going on in Japan. Yesterday, a Japanese schoolboy set a new mark of 22 strikeouts in a high school tournament. The major league record, Tom Chaney owns it, 62, 21 that came in 16 innings. Japanese 16-year-old struck out 22 in a nationally televised high school tournament game. Yeah, that's where uh, Dice K, who signed with the Red Sox and still trying to come back from, what, a neck injury this year, that's where he made his uh, his mark there because of those uh, high school televised tournaments. Very wow. popular. Yeah. There's a towering shot first base. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Out of nowhere. I mean, that, around. Yeah. Frank Coro had 28 home runs. Uh, he got jammed the first time actually popped up to the pitcher. Miguel Gonzalez this time big home run swing and home run is Mike Boddicker who I saw today from Iowa would say home run in a silo. And there you go. Out of the uh, <laughs> the clouds. How about Quintanilla playing traffic cop there? He had both arms out separating them. Well, that's what Jim Cott used to do. Uh, he'd call a guy off and then hold the other guys. And, of course, Jim was such a big guy <laughs> on his way to about 286 wins and 16 consecutive gold gloves. Not a bad idea, actually. Well, no. It, well, as long as the guy that you want to catch the ball here is. That's right. <laughs> Here, here's Getz one down. He had a single his first time up. Getz will take the pitch from Gonzalez inside. And a 2-0 count. Gonzalez has walked one and struck out three. O'Shaver on the other side, a walk and a strikeout. The Orioles 2-3-0 and, oh, and the Royals 1-2-0. and oh. Getz takes that one for a strike coming into the inning. Gonzalez, eight out of 15. First pitch 
Strikes 10. 10 now first pitch strikes thrown. In the ball game to the first 17 faced. Here's the 2 1 delivery and that looped the other way foul. It matters to Gonzalez first pitch strikes after that 0 1 count 254 average if he goes 1 and 0 after that 286. Two ball two strike count. Up the middle and that'll be a base hit. And gets us two for two out of that eight spot that comes with one away. On Wednesday, the first 10,000 kids, 14 and under, at the Orioles Red Sox game at 7:05, are going to get an Orioles collectible truck presented by W.B. Mason. Bring the kids out to the ballpark and uh, wear some orange. The American League East Showdown, 888-84A-Bird, Orioles.com. That's 14 and under. First 10,000 kids on Wednesday. Yeah, the wounded Red Sox. Wham. Yeah, well, that's what their fans are saying, unfortunately. Here's Jared Dyson. Question is, can Bobby Valentine make it through the season? Well, that, I suppose they could always make a change, but I think that you got John Lester and Josh Beckett are 9 and 17 between the two of them. As we mentioned, Beckett gave up eight runs and three home runs. He's going to, I think, pitch the first game uh, here in Baltimore. He had some back problems. 0-1 lashed into center field a base hit Dyson. Jones will hold the lead runner gets at second base. Two on and one away in this one run ball game. Yeah and again remember it's uh, not the walks as much as what happens after them. But we can see and we saw it against the Tampa Bay where Miguel and Gonzalez just didn't have a feel but that doesn't seem to be the case tonight. So now all of a sudden you let the eight and nine hitter and now you're back at the the top of the lineup and it's not only that Gordon can can hit he got three hits last night one of them a home run is that they get to see you for the third time. Now with two on and one away big at bat Alex Gordon who has struck out and flied out Gordon this season 231 against the Orioles a homer a couple of RBIs will take the pitch up high for a ball on a fastball to start him out. Gordon a dangerous as we've seen. Power hitter when necessary leads the majors in doubles as well with 38 and a three for five ball game last night. 1 0. Good speed on the base pass, both first and second. Breaking ball inside corner to him, 1 1. Yeah, it looked to me he's either looking away or again, uh, Miguel Gonzalez has shown he'll throw that change up when he gets behind, but sending obviously on something differently. One and one. Hold the runner close at second. And took him away that time. One and two with a little extra. It's the amazing story that again you would never have thought that number one that Miguel Gonzalez would have ever even been with the Orioles. But they Fred Ferrer saw him down in the Mexican League. They signed him during spring training. Went to Norfolk and lights out. One ball two strike count here you saw Getz and Tyson on the base pass again came in working him away in in then away then back in again and the count goes to one and two. A lot of pitches yeah. seen Gordon in that leadoff spot. It's another thing he's done right. Most pitches face Curtis Granderson and about Adam Dunn Michael Bourne and then uh, Chase Headley. So he's been uh, patient. Not chasing. Well, he uses the whole field too. I mean, you know, he's a better center left field hitter. You know, someone just misses, but you see again, and I think a lot of it is he doesn't really. I mean, even though he did club a home run last night, he had gone what 207 at bats without a home run. So he's a line drive hitter. It doesn't mean he can't hit home runs because he hit over 20 last year. But that's not his intention. Just drive the ball, and that's where he gets all the doubles. Two ball, two strike count. And he got him on a pitch foul tipped into the mitt and Gonzalez gets a big strikeout two down. Yeah he's doing his Steve Johnson impression right there. You think you can get to it again. It's just on the top edge of the strike zone. So again look at what happens and of course that's a little bit different but he uses his fastball early second time all of a sudden we see more sliders and then we might see some more curveballs. So that is what you call pitching. So if hitters do see you three four times through the lineup you're able to get them out different ways. 
Now there are two down. Escobar. He has popped out and walked. Two to one ball game. Royals trying to get it tied up here with a base hit. Strike taken. Escobar. Three game hit streak coming into this one. And as we said, he has been red hot against the Orioles, hitting 423 in the year coming into this ball game against the O's. Kansas City, by the way, has won the last three games that these teams have played to even the series up at 3 3. Here's the 0 1. Runners are going. That ball has popped up over towards first base and it will be out of play. So how about that? Well, you have a strike thrower. I think if you're Ned Yost, you, 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 you've already stolen 83 bases. Matt Whitter's going to come out and have a little conversation. But you have to understand, now, first of all, you have uh, 18 straight stolen bases down at first. The back, you know, the secondary runner. You got eight at second base and somebody has to cover. And you hope if you're a manager and you have a guy that's going to throw a lot of strikes that somebody will cover and maybe you will find a hole. Kansas City sixth in the American League in stolen bases. 0 2 count now with two down. Antonia holding the runner at second backs off. Here's the 0 2 delivered. That one is blue foul off the fists into the first row down the line. Gonzalez has done a great job getting inside on both lefties and right handers. A lot of balls that have been blooped right above the fists. When they called him up, you uh, know, I was talking to uh, Buck Showalter, the Oriole manager, and he said what they like is he throws strikes and he's not afraid to pitch inside. And we've seen that. And again, with 0 and 2, when you look at that 0 and 2 count, if you come in, you can go in. And you keep pitching from behind, which he doesn't do very often, harder to get in. The 0 2 way outside. So the runners will have the advantage here if he can't keep ahead in this count. Goes to one and two. Escobar drew a walk. The only walk surrendered in his last at bat. The lead runner, of course, gets us one who determines anything as far as stealing a base if he can get off second. Anthony is not giving him a lot of room. And a swing and a miss, and he got him. So Gonzalez five strikeouts back to back here in the fifth with a couple on base. The Orioles maintain a one run lead. Four series final meeting the Orioles in Kansas City. It is that time of the year. You take a ball game last night when the Orioles lose it by a score of eight to two. Kansas City struggled all year. Everybody goes, whoa, no, here it goes again. It's the time of the year where every game changes everything from the well, perspective of the fans. Well, it really is. And of course, you like, I don't know if you're ever safe with a one run lead, but you know, talking to Lou Ford, I said, probably the, and I played on teams that won one by 15, 18 games. And that was a lot of fun. But in 74, we won 26 out of the last 31. And what I was trying to tell him was basically everybody over the course of those last 31 games did something to help you win. Tonight, you got Quintanilla, two run home run. He doesn't hit a lot of home runs, but you mentioned hitting more this year. You got Miguel uh, 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 Gonzalez after uh, Chen, who's been so good for the Orioles' struggles. You have him pitching again, giving you a chance to win. So uh, this is what the rest of the season is going to be about. Yep. We don't know who. It doesn't have to be Jones or Mark Higgins. It could be anybody on this team. And in fact, it'll have to be others, uh, probably than the stars, that help pick the ball club up on any given night. That ball's got to get down to third and foul. This is uh, Manny Machado up there. Our AT&T Mobility Trivia Fact. 20 years, 35 days. Machado, the second youngest player. Any of the team's active rosters. Bryce Harper, of course, at 19. The youngest. 
And Machado will take the pitch. Machado for the Orioles grounded out the only at bat that he has had in the ball game. Bo Shaver two ball one strike count on him. And watches it go by and the count goes to three and one. Now nice little take. And boy taking close pitches that's what you like to see not only uh, any hitter on your team just gets the pitch count up better pitch to hit. We saw that how Quintanilla that's how Omar got his count to three and one took some close curve balls and hammered that two run home run and that's the difference in this game. Three ball two strike count. O'Shaver's delivery to him. That ball is in the air. Is that numero uno? Yay! Goodbye, home run. Manny Machado delivers with his first major league dinger. A double and he'll hit for the cycle in his first two major league games. Fans on a curtain call. Yeah, I think that's a little early. And today uh, he's going to put one towards the gap. That's going to fall in for a base hit. The Quintanilla with a home run and a single, and the Orioles' first two are on here in the fifth inning. Well, take a look at the count three and two, and you know when Tejada Miguel came over here I once saw him a hanging curveball in Fenway Park and it was like his eyes lit up like he had just won the jackpot in Las Vegas and this is a hanging curveball and it just speeds up the bat and you could see him wait and wait and then hit his first major league home run great pitch to hit great approach nice little smile Machado delivers he came of course out of Bowie with a nine game hit streak. Put those together with his first two ball games here. He's hit in the last 11 pro games that he has played in. And uh, Kintani is helping the cause here too. Is he and Machado batting in the number eight and nine spots? They're getting on base between the two of them so far. They've had two home runs and three hits. Negmar Kegas top of the order with nobody out. O'Shaver's delivery to him. That's going to catch the outside corner for a strike. And yeah, not too many change-ups from Luke tonight. That was one, and Nick not looking for it. So it's a cat and mouse game. Can you hit the outside corner? And or can if you're Nick Markakis with nobody out, can you create that at least the runner to second, maybe third, first to third situation? Outside with it and a one ball. One strike count. Shaver with a two home run surrendered up in this ball game now at 15. Surrendered on the year. Quintanilla taking a long look. His being at first base gives Marquecas that hole between first and second. One ball, one strike count. And look where the glove is. Right on the outside corner. Take a look at our Kia inside the numbers brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. Highest average from the number one spot. Nick Markakis with that 356 for the Orioles. Alamar Bumbry a couple of times and Brian Roberts. Numbers in the leadoff spot. And it'll be fouled the other way and the count goes to one and two. Yeah, my intention uh, when I would have a left handed hitter would like Nick Markakis and we know he hits the ball the other way very well. Even if you give him a single to left field, the double play is still in order. So, one of the cardinal rules of the right handed starter don't let him hook that ball into the hole. One and two. And a chopper slowly hit. Getz will make the underhanded flip to get the out. Quintanilla will move down to second base. And Marquecas is retired. So the Orioles get a runner in scoring position with one down and a 3 1 lead in the ballgame. Yeah, more pressure on Luke Ochever, Cheever. And uh, that's the type of the ballgame because of uh, what Miguel Gonzalez has been able to do keep them off the board. So Machado sitting in there after hitting that home run. He had 11 home runs in 109 games for the Bay Sox this season, hitting 266. And he had a, a very hot bat, obviously, with a nine game hit streak when he was called up. 
What was he hitting like 452 or something in August? Mm. I saw that number last night, so over 450. Well, what I liked about it is he wasn't trying to pull the ball. The, the breaking ball you know, sped up the bat. Otherwise, you know, you want your young hitters to use the whole field. The, the times I've seen him in spring training, you know, he's not a young kid that just comes up and says, "Oh, I'm going to hit a bunch of home runs. I'm just going to gap to gap, and if I get a good pitch to hit, which that was, then I might become a pull hitter." This is a perfect park to do that. 1-0 count, runner at second base. Hardy will take the pitch for a strike, and it will go to one and one. Well, the Orioles continue the way it has been all season long, and that's about home runs. Using the home run ball to account for almost half of their total runs, and here in this ball game, it's happened again. Quintanilla, two-run homer, solo shot by Machado. Three runs, home runs. Down to third base, right along the line. Mustakas, wow. He had time to look back and make sure the runner was not going to go, and Hardy is retired. Nice play. Mid Atlantic Sports Report will be back on Monday, 5 to 7. Tom Davis, Dave Johnson, Mel Anton, and Phil Wood. All the latest Oriole news, notes, and headlines from around the majors. That'll be Monday at 5 right here on Masson. They'll be talking about Machado. Interesting uh, discussions going on around Major League Baseball since he is on MLB.com the third rated prospect in the minors before his call up. A lot of discussion about whether or not and it always happens. Do you bring a guy up too soon uh, with the youth that he has and the number of ball games not played at the minor league level. And I saw columns all around that went both ways on that. We talked about Buck Showalter's feelings about that. And he says you can't ruin the good ones. And that's what he said last night. He doesn't think he can bring a really good ball player up too early. His feeling is even if he's young, if he's got the stuff to play at the major league level, he's going to have it whenever you call him up with, you know, a little experience in the minors, yes. But he doesn't believe you got to send somebody through three, four, five years of minor league baseball before they come up. Pitch taken away for a ball. The count goes to 2 and 0. Yeah, I kind of concur with the. Uh... President of baseball operations Dan Duquette he said uh, you know we, we want to put our best team out there every night and they brought him back uh, basically because they've really struggled defensively at third yep. and I mentioned it last night if Robert Andino was hitting like he did last year man he'd probably still be a double A but he but he isn't he's still a very valuable part of this team because he's a great utility player Chris Davis runner at second base got one to jump on yep. and fouled it straight back well there's your home run swing Again, when you're hot, and then Chris again in and out of hotness. Nine game hitting streaks stopped earlier in the in the week. I mean, that's a pitch that you pulverize. You know, the power to make it five to one with one swing. But I am sure if you're Miguel Gonzalez and I've been there, you'll settle for a run here. You'd love to have a three run lead. Here's the two one uh, delivery, and that's going to be foul back. Two two. So take a look at the hot zone. It's not up and in. No, hardly ever anybody is, and it's not down and away. So it's kind of uh, in the middle of the plate. Typical for left-handers. They usually are good low ball hitters. Davis talking to himself. The last two pitches and two he felt he <laughs> should have been able to catch up to. Yeah, especially the first one. That 2-0 pitch was that was hit it hard somewhere. Only one hit in his last 19 at bats. Two ball, two strike count. Runner off second base, Quintanilla. And that'll be inside to it. Just miss. Yeah, I was talking to him yesterday, Gary, and I, I said, How do you hit left? He said, Well, I just try to stay close. So I said, oh, Why can't you hit right handers that way? He said, Well, I probably could, couldn't I? So, you know, again, I mean, it's just what happens when you're one for 19, you overthink things. When you're, you're not getting out of the third inning, you're going, Oh, here we go again. Yep. If I hit a ball hard like he did last night, oh, I'm never going to get a hit. And he got him. So the strikeout recorded. O'Shaver will pick up his second, but the Orioles had another run. Manny Machado, just his second game, delivers his Major League first home run to the delight of the crowd here at Camden Yards. There's a souvenir.
Our Geico highlights, Miguel Gonzalez uh, trying to get the Orioles back in the win column. A great fastball, five strikeouts on the night, all assortment of pitches and, and clutch things. And then trailing one nothing after the home run by Salvador Perez. Quintanilla, two-run shot to put him up 2-1. to one, And then the hanging breaking ball, Manny Machado, triple single last night, home run tonight. As the Orioles take a 3-1 to one lead. And everybody congratulating him. There you go. Again, all the runs, all four, four of them via the home run ball here at Camden Yards. Good line for Miguel Gonzalez, who will work here in the top of the sixth inning. Mike Mustakas leading it off, and the pitch taken away. Luke Koshaver, by the way, has given up the home runs here, two of them, and only given up one home run in his starts here in Baltimore, even though his ERA was almost eight. And his record was 0 3. Machado gets just the second homer off Hoshaver here in this ballpark. Uh, the second of this ball game. And Quintanilla had the second one in his first time up. So the long ball has well, hurt the Kansas City starter. Yeah, really, uh, pretty much only two pitches for Luke tonight. You know, hanging curveball and a fastball down the middle of the second baseman for the Oros. Mustakas on the little chopper that's going to be fair. Leader says, I've got it. Yep, there's an on. on it. Yep. One away well, in the sixth. Only one leadoff man on in the ball game against Gonzalez for the Royals in the third inning, and in that inning, two were left stranded. Well, they've had their opportunities, and you know, even in the fifth inning, a couple of guys on back-to-back -back strikeouts to get out of that inning. Big strikeout of uh, Mustakas, who just hit the little tapper, and for this guy that is just red hot, again almost hit for the cycle last night. They've been able to go inside, and that's where. Matt Wieters is sitting again. 0 for 2 in the game. That one to right field. Mike Kekas. Warning track. Wall. Oh, he's got it. Yeah, ball just carrying tonight. He keeps going, going, going. Take a look at our PNC minor league report brought to you by PNC for the achiever in you. LJ Hose, last 10 games, hitting 462 with the six multi hit games this season. 319 average, couple of home runs with Norfolk. Uh, but Joe Waller was talking about him today. Uh, is he on the board? Is he somebody you've talked about? Is he a player likely to make it up here? And the manager's answer? We'll see. Nope. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Boy, he's when a good. When the defender. roster's expanded, yeah. oh, he'll be yeah. here. Yeah. And uh, he said he hasn't just come onto the scene here late. He said we saw him in the spring and liked what we saw and what we had, and uh, we have kept him on the table and been talking about him. We being the management of the Orioles. And the pitch down low. It'll be interesting to see Buck, who's been through this before, his take on the expanded roster. Most managers, and I think Buck is one of those, they do not want to have too many people around if you're a ball club that's in the running for the postseason. Yeah, that makes sense. Last year, of course, they had five lefties out of their bullpen, yep. and it made a difference. The only winning month for the Orioles last year. You get too many players around, you're trying to play everybody, give everybody a chance. The clubhouse is too full. You just change the whole chemistry of what's going on. And when you're trying to win ball games to make the postseason, you want to have control of everything that you can control. Two ball, one strike out on Perez. And that one goes to center field. Jones. It's not that easy. Gonzalez retires the side in order, and that is going to be the third of six innings of which he has had a one, two, three inning.
the game three of the four game set. Chris Tillman's going to go on the mound for the Orioles against Luis Mendoza. Our right, coverage on Masson HD 630 O's Extra presented by Jeep, followed by game coverage at seven. All the access you need right here on Masson. Well, there it is. Luis Mendoza lost a tough game to Chicago. Uh, pitched very well. Chris Tillman, he's won his last four, never won more than two in a row. So. Uh, he's on a roll for Mendoza. I, I tell you, I was impressed. He really sent the ball, so should have a nice little duel on Eddie Murray statue unveiling Saturday evening. 5:15 for the ceremony. Five o'clock gates open. Mendoza will face the Orioles for the first time in four years. He uh, was with Texas and got his first major league win against the Orioles back in 07. The Orioles' Adam Jones will lead it off in the bottom of the sixth inning. A single. Hit by a pitch and got caught stealing. Five game hit streak against Hoshaver. Now he is nine for 21 with a home run. And a big count on a pitch going away from him. Take a look at our Hollywood Casino League leaderboard. And there you see Adam Jones, in the extra base hit category, second only to Cano. Slots, tables, dining, the ultimate triple play at Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. The 0 1 delivery off the fist for space. Yeah, big night on getting in on hitters' hands, and uh, that's part of pitching. And again, Luke able to do it with a nice running fastball after he established the curveball, and Miguel Gonzalez all night long. And again, when you have teams that don't walk a lot or free swingers, and both the Royals and the Orioles are in that category, if you're around the zone and you make good pitches, not that it's easier to get them out, but it's less difficult. O'Shaver and Gonzalez going at it. The Orioles 3-5 and 0, 1 4 and 0 for the Royals. The Orioles have left three. The Royals have left four. And uh, that will bring up Matt Wieters. He has flied out tonight. A little bit of a difference for the starter Hoshaver in this ball game. As he set some balls up in the air. We mentioned the fact that he's been a ground ball pitcher. 60% of the outs coming on ground balls here tonight, though. The Orioles have been able to lift the ball a little bit, and two of those have left the yard. 1 0 delivery scooped up inside. 2 0. Now, one where he had to throw a strike, 3 and 1 to Pintadilla, and he hit the two run home run, and then again, uh, he went away from at least what I think is his best strength. That's his fastball, and hung a curveball, and Machado hit it out. There's his pitching coach on the right, yeah. Played umpire Bill Welke took this one. Ow. Oh, and that's directly going to have to eat left handed tomorrow. Oh. Right flush in the forearm. Can't hide. As he checks the arm, you saw Perez went out to the mound. Give the umpire a chance to regroup. And the pitch is in there for a strike, and it goes to two and one. You remember the, uh, the tubes of what? The, the, Cold uh, ethyl chloride. You know, they used to come out and spray your ankle. Yep. You got hit or all that. Yep. If I was pitching tonight, I've been Miguel Gonzalez. I would have run out on the field with a little bit of cold spell from my umpire. <laughs> Anything See, to try to get be... a pitch or two. I <laughs> think that maybe that's a little bit over know, the top. It's a little presumptive to do that. A little bit over the top. A, a little bit. Maybe. Maybe in the seventh inning. <laughs> Not in the sixth. You know, at least an ice bag. At least an ice bag. <laughs> Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way to Wieters. Oh, nice take. And it goes 3 and 2. Tell you about Hoshaver's outs tonight, how they've been recorded. He's uh, he's had six ground ball outs, seven fly ball outs, though, and a couple of strikeouts. Generally, those fly balls would not be at that level. 3 2 delivery on the way to Wieters, and he's on. Earned that one. Only the second walk the Orioles have picked up. This one comes with one away. Our O's Extra post game tune in brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever in you. Jim and Rick standing by to take a look at this one. Buck Walter will listen in on his press conference, player interviews, and more as the Jim and Rick will look back on however this one finishes. Good ball game, though, with the Orioles leading right now by a score of three to one. One down. Here's Betamy. He picked up a double leading off the second, would score on the Quintanilla home run. And that's going to get away. And that hit, hit him. Yep. That one bounced off him. And they said he swung. No. Uh, well, he had his hand up. Yeah. No. And that's he's a back door curveball. And take a look. I mean, right to the back ankle. Wilson, a very good fastball hitter. That's how they try to get him out. And 
gets him right on the toe. It's a real chance for the Orioles. Well, your real speed, though, is at second base. Matt Weeters now with a couple of stolen bases down in Tampa. Three for three this year. Well, I'm, I'm not. He's that, third he's on. Done. He's third on the team. You going to give him the sign right here? No, I'm not. Okay, I'm not I don't want to run. I just oh. want to score. Oh, but he is third on the Orioles in stolen bases. Yes. Right behind Robert Andino. Once again. Numbers you can make anything out of well, you want. Well. I guess you could probably. <laughs> <laughs> that ball in the air to the gap. Left center field. But Klaus got himself a base hit. Coming around to score, the speedster leaders. Right behind him, Benavid, he'll stop at third. I told you. He can fly. RBI McLeod and the Orioles extend the lead. It is four to one. There you go. A walk, a hit, the batsman, and then the gapper. A double for Nate McLeod getting the start and left. Yeah, just a ball up out of the plate and able to get on top of it and drive it past uh, Alex Gordon. First RBI as an Oriole for McLeod. They're miling out to the mound now to talk to Hosheva, their starter, as they get their bullpen active and are trying to hustle it up down there as the Orioles take advantage of the 11th hit batter of the year by Hoshaver. That was Betamit. Second runner on in the inning. He's over at third base now and there's Tim Collins. So the Orioles 4 1 and they've got two in scoring position and only one away. And again Manny Machado is going to get the opportunity. Yeah I think that meeting was uh, twofold. Calm down Coach Haver and then uh, also Say, how are we going to pitch him? Hanging breaking balls, a pitch he hit for a home run on the 3 2 count. Infield is in. Machado will take it for a strike, his major league first. And he came up with a runner in third the first time as he lost that curve ball into the seats and grounded right to Escobar at shortstop on a sinker. There's a little delivery swung on him. Now the Orioles. This is a net bat that can uh, start closing the barn door. With the two in scoring position, Betamid hit by a pitch, and McLeod with the RBI double at second base, and that infield drawn in, giving a lot of opportunity here. Perez again asking for a timeout to go through the signs again. And you see the drawn in infield and the outfield playing way around towards right. Now, when you get to 0 and 2, you're looking for a punch out. Machado's trying to get one in the air somewhere. And a check swing. Did he go? Nope. Cristiani down in. First yeah, first. a little extra. And again, you don't have to get a base hit. And that's what. Ooh. Went farther than I thought. I thought he stayed it back a little bit better than that. Here's the one-two delivery on the way. And he lifts that one. That's going to the corner. Manny Machado. Goodbye. Home run. It is second major league ball game. A two homer game. That one good for three RBIs and four in the ball game. The same young man got the baseball as caught the first home run. Machado has knocked O'Shaver out of the ball game. Talk about writing an opening page in your major league introduction. Last night, he picked up two hits and four at bats. He's had two home runs, four RBIs, and three times to the plate in this ball game. And the Oriole fans on their feet as the O's taking the lead on Kansas City.
Well, he has ignited the crowd. They asked for a curtain call the first time. This time he gives it as Hoshaber is out of the ball game and Machado's got a two homer game. Yeah, and he lit up the scoreboard. So four RBIs. You know, again, I know it's well intentioned. Coach Haber throws a fastball right by him, hangs another breaking ball, and voila, a three-run shot to make it seven to one. Tim Collins hard throwing lefty will come in for the Royals. And again, having a really nice year, especially on the road. 121 ERA, struggles more at home, but he is a strikeout guy. Leads all of the American League relievers with those 71 strikeouts, and you can see again. Does a nice job of both against righties and lefties. And the pitch will be taken inside. As Omar Quintanilla comes up, he's been part of the night. He picked up his second home run of the year with the Orioles, third overall on the season. A two RBI homer that came in the second, but it's Machado night here at Camden Yards. This has got uh, the uh, storybook yeah. beginning here. It's only two nights, but it is. The storybook two nights. Yeah, so there are the numbers for Luke, and you know, again, it was a couple of pitches. I mean, those are the home run balls. So again, all three of the home runs led to all the runs, and certainly disappointed because, uh, again, for the Royals to win, they have to have good starting pitching. The Royals didn't get it last night. They lost trying to win six in a row for the first time this year. Two a delivery on the way. That'll be swung out and missed. Two and one. And then Tim Collins has got that great big overhand curveball, and this one I've seen him doesn't have any problem throwing him regardless of the count. For Ochaver, only the second game this year, he surrendered three home runs in a ball game, seven runs on seven hits, and that pitch is there at the knees for a strike and a two ball, two strike count. Lukosiewicz continues his struggles against the Orioles. 0 and 1 this year, 1 and 5 lifetime, and here at Camden Yards, 0 and 3 with an ERA of almost 8, and it's exactly what has happened to him here tonight. Great off-speed breaking ball right there. Well, that's like in the backyard with that curveball, playing wiffle ball and trying to follow it. You know, again, a lot of times, uh, some of the Cuban players, Tony Oliva, talks about how they used to try to hit bottle caps. Floating all over the place. And that's what that hook did. Perfect curveball outside corner. Our Kia pitch tracks brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. The seemingly unflappable Manny Machado. Well, I, to me, again, I, I said this earlier, I, the great thing about it, he wasn't trying to hit those home runs. He just got pitches that sped up his bat. Line drive yeah. to short. Nick Marikakis yeah. is retired. That will end the inning, but Weeder's got a one-out walk. Betamit got hit by a pitch. McLeod an RBI double, and then boom! His second home run of the night. Manny Machado, seven to one out.
special American Red Cross blood drive. You can join us at the life-saving event Saturday. It'll be on August 18, 8 to 4 here at Camden Yards. All donors will receive a limited edition Oriole Park 20th anniversary baseball, two tickets to an upcoming game, and a chance to meet former Oriole Chris Hoyles. Appointments are required. Please call 1-800-RED-CROSS. And uh, blood donations, obviously, in the summer, urgently needed. So we hope you'll participate. There's Manny Machado. He's now the youngest player in Orioles history to have a multi-homer game. That one in the air to center Jones. He's got to go way back, warning track. Hey, got it! How oh, he caught that one on the run, reaching out, timing it perfectly. And Osmer is retired. Wow, you were talking about last night. Wasn't there some uh, survey saying that Adams the best center fielder in baseball? Well, first of all, he's playing a couple of steps to right center. This changeup gets hammered. And then he's just able to run it down because he, 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 he can pick him up and put him down. Great jump on the ball. He gets, you know, a lot of guys get good jumps, but he gets, again, about as good as anybody. Eric Cosmer denied a hit. Here's Jeff Francoeur. Francoeur has popped out twice. One hit in six at bats in this series. We are in the seventh inning. The Orioles have the seven to one lead. That ball's high in the air. Third base, Machado coming over and will not have a play. Yeah, talking to Ned Yost, the skipper for the Royals, and about Eric Cosmer, who was third in the American League uh, rookie voting. I mean, terrific year last year, over 290, and, what, 17 home runs, over 80 RBIs. He, he said it's not like he hasn't hit the ball hard, and there's a perfect illustration. And just that Jones ran it down. Certainly not having the year he had last year, and then to try harder. And, and that's what happens with uh, young players. Jeff Francoeur takes the pitch up high. So now Gonzalez, after his fourth win, his first outing against Kansas City. Pretty good shape. No, this is the same team that had seven extra base hits and 13 hits last night. This has been a red hot team since August 1st. This Kansas City Ball Club tied for third and wins. They have had uh, the tenth most runs in the majors and the fourth best ERA in the majors over that period. The Orioles, though, have come back tonight, and this is just what we talked about at the top of the show. The run differential for the Orioles does not give you a very good picture of what they're doing. Machado tonight coming on with a couple of home runs. Quintanilla with the other seven runs, seven hits. After a ball game last night where they only had two runs on six hits, get outscored by six in the game. It has been a season of extremes for the Orioles. Losses in ball games by five, six, seven, or eight runs, as we showed you at the beginning. And then these other ball games where they continually win one run games 22 and 6 and extra inning ball games 12 and 2. Yeah the last 12. Yeah so they won 12 in a row. It's really uh, it's the numbers you can't talk about this ball club by looking at the numbers. Well no yeah and I, that's why every time you well, they drop oh, it. Oh my in foul territory trying to get over there and judge how far he was from the stands. That's a ball he normally would have. Yeah. Well, I mean again ninety nine point nine 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 percent. He just doesn't catch it. And this is a gold glove winner. I can't well, believe it. Well he very rarely takes offense. I mean he's you know had a marvelous since he came back uh, from the hammer bone marvelous second half. But. He's had nothing but line drives and I'm thinking maybe he's thinking about his six line drive with not a whole lot to show for it and it just doesn't catch it. Will be an error charged keeping the at bat alive and he takes advantage of it. Frank Core will drive one into the gap. He's on his way to second base. He's on his way to third base. Relay throw to Machado. They got him. Well you might as well keep oh. running. Just keep running back to the hotel. You got to keep going. A great guy. You know, we saw Adam Jones uh, with not a very heads up base running in the first after the Orioles trailed four to nothing. And right there, he's wondering, how did they ever do that? Well, he Easily. should know because he, well, right here again, I mean, boy, look at this. Hit the cutoff, man. Yeah, practice it. You practice. There's your second guy. And then the perfect throw to Monchap. And, and you just can't do this. The Orioles are very happy about it. So Nick Marcakis says, well, there is some justice. 
Boy, that was well, we saw it again. You go back to what the 17 inning game in Boston. How did they get to the 17? Yeah, the right. relay play to throw out Marlon Bird at home plate. They so end of the ball game. Yeah, so there's just all these little things that when you take them over, what coming into the night at 111 or 12 games, that just add up. Here's gets two down and nobody on. Good play by Adam Jones who went over there to back up on Nick Markakis and made that throw into Hardy. Adam had a long way to go to be the backup man there but that's your job and that's why you do it. Paid off Hardy was the second relay man and he got it over to Machado and they got the out. One ball two strike count on gets two for two in the game couple of singles he'll pop it up. Machado back McClough in McClough wants it oh, get away. and they run into each other. Yep. Oh and Yika Mike. <laughs> Seventh inning stretch time brought to you by Jack Daniels, Tennessee. Honey, fly straight, drink responsibly. Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. Wayne Kirby in charge of the outfielders immediately went to McClouth and uh, Machado as they came off the field. Don't need to see either of those guys out of a ball game. No, you know, again, he doesn't play third base, but, uh, you know, go back to what you were talking about, you know, the run differential, the Orioles, you know, you go, how is this team over 500 because they've been outscored by what, close to 50 runs. Uh, my theory always was when I pitched, if, if I lost two to one, you don't go to sleep that night because you're always going back and examining what's going on. When you get trashed and bombed and all that, we talked about in our opening about how many games we've lost by five, six, seven, eight runs. You don't worry about it. But when you win those one run games, those two run games, so what are they, 37? 37 and 17. One and two runs. Boy, games. you come back to the ballpark, recharge, and that's pretty much what this season's about. You give them a lead to the bullpen, usually they get it done. So the, the games you're supposed to win this year, uh, and again, there's been 60 of them coming in tonight. The Orioles have won. Now, do you know Manny Machado uh, has delivered that home run at this tender young age? And in fact, uh, it's the second youngest to have a ball game like this with a couple of home runs and hit one. Who was the other guy? 20 year old Frank Robinson. What, me? Yes, you! Really? Oh. You! <laughs> you! Oh, that's why I, he talked to me yesterday. He knew. He knew. <laughs> yeah. Matty Machado at 20 years, uh, the youngest O's player to Homer since 19 year old Jim Palmer did it in 1965. In a moment, we'll have a recap of who is pitching, what exactly was the pitch that was delivered, and where he hit the baseball. That ball goes into right field. That's going to be a base hit. Hardy with a little flare shot to open up the Orioles half of the seventh inning. Gets his first hit of the ball game and a new pitcher on the mound for the Royals. Yeah, hey, out of LSU, Ben McDonald, who's uh, in town uh, with Joe Angel taking one of his many vacations over the course of this summer uh, doing the radio. Uh, he was talking to Lewis, so he comes in and. Again, this is a matter of, uh, you know, we saw him last year. He's done a nice job. The home run ball, though, has hurt him. But uh, Ben and Lewis were talking about apparently some defensive back that got suspended, thrown off the field. So they were a little disconsolate. Hopefully it will not affect Lewis's pitching tonight because uh, they're big LSU. What did Ben say? You get a uh, an LSU T-shirt when you're born in Louisiana, and you get a, uh, uh, a camouflage shirt. 
<laughs> and you got to wear both of them <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. Well, that too. And they give you a rifle yeah. along with it. Yeah, he had he had a list, a litany of things you get. Uh, one of my favorite young men, Ben yes, McDonald. He is. Yeah, what a great guy. Games on radio here this week. Yeah. Chris Davis off with a runner on at first base. Davis 0 for 3 in the ball game. Orioles now with eight hits. They lead it by a score of 7 to 1. Uh, speed delivery. Collins uh, worked two thirds of an inning at a strikeout. Hoshaver, five and a third, seven runs, seven hits. Gonzalez has gone the distance for the Orioles, giving up just the one run on five hits in the game. And the O's looking to even up the four game set tonight at one apiece with a victory. They put the shift on against Davis in the infield, the DH. 0 2 delivery to him, and he'll take it up high, one and two. Chris now with the one for his last 20. He has had uh, streaks both ways this season. They seem to go directly from one to the other. Hot, cold, hot, cold. And a swing and a miss on that one will get him. Coleman gets the strikeout one away. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Ended up being a beautiful evening so far. I mean, rain was forecast for the entire night. We haven't had a drop. Now what? That ought to do it. Well, it's been a beautiful evening for this young man. He won't forget game one when he got a couple of hits, and he won't forget game two where he got two home runs and four RBIs so far. And the pitch will be taken outside, Adam Jones. Yeah, still looking in his second major league game for that elusive double. <laughs> a triple, two home runs, an infield hit. What a night uh, for the prospect who's no longer just the prospect, but here playing and at third base. Here's the 1-0 delivery to Jones and a big cut and a one ball one strike count. And you know some of the older players Terry Crowley subbing for Jim Presley and again uh, Jim's dad passing away. We send our condolences but uh, they're going to tell him you're not a home run guy. <laughs> just hit him but drive the ball and when they hang balls you'll, you'll speed up the bat and it's good to see that kind of power though. Because I, you know, last year when Manny came up at the end of the season, not to play, but just to visit the ball club, Jim Presley was Oriole hitting instructor was down at the cage. He said, "Do you lift weights?" And Manny goes, "No." He said, "You better get in the gym." So when I saw him yesterday, I grabbed his yeah. bicep. I said, "You've been working out a little bit, haven't you?" He said, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." Well, and that's part of the maturation process. You. And it just helps if you've got I, that added strength when you hit the ball. When you're that young, aren't you supposed to be going to sleep right about now? It looks like those eyes are going to close. <laughs> One, two is fouled back. One ball, two strike count. Well, just imagine everybody talks about young players, even sometimes older players, you've got to slow the game down. So even though he's been able to do that in two nights, you know, I don't know if you can be, you can any be more on edge. I'm talking about the roller yes. coaster ride. It, that, that coaster's up at the top of the uh, of the loop, especially yeah. since you're asked to come and play a position where you played two games at in professional baseball, and he went around. Home plate umpire making the call on that. Bill Welke said he went strikeout recorded two by Coleman, two down. Yeah, well he drops down, very tough on righties. Take a look, and this is just a swooping breaking ball. And Adams hoping that uh, Bill Welke not going to call him out. That traveled too hard, far. Sure. According to the ups. That'll bring up Matt Waiters. Waiters. Real walk scored on the Machado home run his second. Of the evening. And Waiters 0 for 2 officially three game hit streak for Matt who's hitting at 248 right now. Infield shift is put on against him playing him to pull outfield straight up. Manny Machado, by the way, with the two home runs hit in this ball game, that is his first multi-homer game in professional baseball. He did not have a multi-homer game in his short time in the minors, including 91 games this year. 0 to the count. And that one way outside, refusing to go after it. And the count is one and two. Well, it's the Orioles tonight putting up the numbers and the differential. Game three of this series coming up 
tomorrow night. If you'll join us, 6:30 O's extra, 7 o'clock, the ball game. Chris Tillman, Luis Mendoza, scheduled starters in the Sunday afternoon game. And that is a fair ball. Perez says, "I got it," and it gets him at first base. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on the Orioles on top. Gonzalez looking for the win, up seven, one. Strikeout so far tonight, Vicky. You've won a total of $1,000 from the Maryland Lottery. For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, play Strike It Rich Scratch Offs and enter your non winning ticket codes at mdlottery.com slash strike it rich. And uh, Vicky, maybe more to come here. Gonzalez is uh, going to try and enter new territory as yeah. far as this year is concerned. He's had two ball games in which he has gone seven innings. His first game against the Angels, where he gave up a run, three hits, and seven, and his last one against Tampa Bay, where he gave up no runs, two hits, in seven innings. So well, there you go. A uh, nice little mixture, 90 pitch count. Uh, the, the most he's thrown, 111. Actually, make it 114. That was a game against the Indians where he went six and two thirds innings. So, oh, he asked me tonight. I, you know, he, he threw some three home runs and, and he pitched very well and beat the Yankees. Got some early runs. Uh, he said, I, you know, I just got a little tired and I started cutting the ball. And I said, okay, slow your body down, speed up your arm. That's part of starting, and that's what you have to do sometimes. But you never learn to do it unless you get to this point. So, to his credit. Again, the only the fly ball by Salvador Perez to right field, opposite field. That's the only run that the uh, Royals have been able to get. And that was back in the second inning. Since then, the extra base hit, the only one, the double in the seventh by Frank Cor, who got thrown out trying to make it a triple. And Jared Dyson will foul that one uh, back. Dyson has had a single and a sacrifice. He's got an eight game hit streak, hitting at 273. Miguel Gonzalez in his pro career has had only one complete game. That was back in 2007 with the Arkansas Travelers when he had a complete game shutout. Yeah, this is one of those games, again, if he can just slow everything down and uh, still throw strikes because he's made so many good pitches tonight. And foul right back into the top of the screen, and the count goes to one and two. Yeah, he's pitched to both sides of the plate. He's been able to throw the unexpected. That was Earl Weaver's favorite a phrase when a guy will pitch backwards where fastball counts. Everybody's looking fastball except he'll float a change up in there. And the one two delivery on the way. That's launched the other way, and that two is going to be a foul ball. So the count will stay one ball and two strikes. As the Orioles trying to send Kansas City to just their 16th defeat in the ball game where they scored first. They got the Perez home run for the 1 0 lead. Didn't last long. It was in the second inning. The Orioles came back with the Quintanilla home run to take the lead in the second. That ball, Jones, is playing in long way. Not going to get this one. And that's going to be, I didn't see what happened at the plate here. That's going to be a single. So Dyson got himself in the batter's box apparently and uh, just kind of walked down to first base. The trainer's coming. Yeah, take a look. And, uh, ooh. 
I don't know if he pulled a hamstring. You certainly hope because he's a speedster and then. He knows he has to get to first base and. The Jared Dyson. will get a single on that long ball. And now the question of whether or not he can stay in the ball game. And Yost, the manager, talking to him. Well, hot, humid night uh, out there, long game, maybe a cramp. That, that's what you would hope for. But again, uh, a lot of stress when you swing a bat. The lower body, wrists, apparently all right. Of course, he's so fast, maybe even at three quarters, he can run well. He just don't want him to hurt himself. So a little hanging change up, and that's two pitches he's been able to get on top of tonight for base hits. And then it looks like he just uh, maybe gets a cramp in the calf or somewhere. No wonder he only got to first. So he will stay in the ball game. And Kader is going to come out to have a word with Gonzalez. 95 pitches in the ball game. Leadoff batter Gordon coming up. The Orioles bullpen is active. As Pedro Stroke gets up to throw. He's just getting up, however, so Adair may be drawing a little time for the pen here to get ready. Now yeah, look at the pitch count, and again, uh, very efficient, except for the fifth. And on two occasions, uh, again, was able to get out of tough, tough jams with a couple of guys on with strikeouts when he only had a two-to-one count. You look at the scoreboard, you oh, this is a, this has kind of been a cakewalk. That's not been the case. Nope. Runner on at first base, leadoff man. Here's Alex Gordon, 0 for 3 in the ball game, 3 for 8 in the series. And the pitch to him is in there for a strike from Gonzalez. That'll be hit number six on the board for the Royals. Orioles out hitting them 8 6, but outscoring them 7 to 1. And only four have been left on base by each team in the ball game. 0 1. Jordan's delivery will be foul a swing brothers fouled straight back 0 and 2. For Gonzalez he continues to write one of the most unlikely stories of course with. The injury that kept him out of 2008 and 2009 and then. His comeback working his way around independent ball Mexican League. Just hanging on hoping somebody would give him a chance and here he is. 0 2 delivery, and that's going to miss down low. And a one ball, two strike count. We were talking about teams like the Orioles making a postseason run. How you've got to have some people other than your stars pick up both at the plate and on the mound. Gonzalez certainly right now fits into one of those categories. It really does. And it's kind of like having an extra guy, like making a trade for somebody. Of course, the problem is that some of the guys that you really thought that would come back, you know, whether it was Arietta because of the elbow injury, they shut him down in August. You know, didn't have a great spring, but was throwing the ball. In fact, I talked to some of the scouts, and uh, they said still has good velocity, uh, but not commanding his stuff. They said Mattis not throwing the ball well at all. So, a couple of the guys you thought or at least hoped would come back. He again. The body gets quick, and when you get a little tired, it's got to be the opposite way. You have to slow. You have to stay over the pitching rubber. You know, you don't think that Dyson, even though he's stolen 18 in a row, is going to be running. But again, if you just don't experience it, it's hard to explain to somebody. But you stay where you are and just make sure you get your arm out front and throw the ball downhill. Make a good pitch here. Maybe get a double play ball. 2 2 delivery on the way, and there it is right there. Quintanilla, there's Hardy, and there's two. And the reason I talk about all that is just it's about feel and uh, he was able to once again slow his body down speed up his arm and gets a double play time now for your detection you vote for the AT&T player of the game let me guess <laughs> OK here are the candidates tonight Miguel Gonzalez a great start Omar Quintanilla has had a home run good for two RBIs couple of hits in the ball game and Manny Machado in just his second game four RBIs two home runs text in your vote A B or C three one eight. Two to six. So what was that? You say he's the youngest Oriole to hit two home runs? At the no, he is the youngest uh, Oriole to have a home run. Just any, just yeah. one. 
Except for me. Except, of course, for you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Except, obviously. Okay, I just kind of wanted yeah. to go back and read it. Oh, it was 1965, and we have no, yet I'm... to hear an explanation. Well, and we'll this is going to be a ground ball to third. Fortunately, this is going to be the third out. Can, we, can we, we have an on camera? When we, <laughs> when we come back. <laughs> when we come back, Jim Pommel will bring us all the exciting news of a home run in 1965 that he hit when he was 19 years old. Where, against whom, and how hard? Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield will contribute $50 to support the American Heart Association Heart Walk. To date, the Orioles have 323 walks, $16,150. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. We'll have a new pitcher as Tiford comes out of the bullpen. Yeah, Everett Tiford, uh, uh, actually second year with the uh, the Royals. Uh, Tom, one of the guys that does a lot of pitching. But again, there are the numbers for him. Uh, talking to, uh, again, uh, Ben McDonald and Lewis Stroman. His locker was next to her. It looked like he was in Babe Ruth ball. Very young-looking left-hander. He will replace Coleman, who worked uh, an inning at a couple of strikeouts, gave up one hit. As we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning, Benamit, McClouth, and uh, Manny Machado are due up. Yeah, one of the three lefties they have in their bullpen. We already saw Tim Collins. You also, uh, Francis Lee Bueno. I met him yesterday, and I said, you know, introduced myself, and I said, Como se llama? He said, Bueno. And I said, Well, no, no, I'm good. Yes, thanks. And he said, No, no, my name is Bueno. Bueno. I go. <laughs> well, it got very complicated. <laughs> yeah, it was. One whole delivery is going to go to right field. All right, let's get this in now. Your okay. home run, 1965. You're 19 years old. Yeah. And I come in in relief. Yeah. Uh, against the Yankees in uh, Baltimore on a Sunday afternoon. And I can't remember who started, but he apparently wasn't very good because I was in there early. And uh, Jim Bowden, who I, I was a Yankee fan growing up because I was born in New York. And. Uh, Joe Garagio, Joe Garagio was doing the radio, and Pepitone sneaks in at first. They're looking for me to bunt, and I homer over the right center field fence. Off, Davey Johnson. Off Bowden. Yeah, no, off Bowden. And 25 years later, I'm doing the Bob Costas show, and he actually has the the uh, the, the radio uh, transcript of Joe Garagiola. Really? And he does the whole thing. Pepitone sneaking in. Boyer sneaking in at third. 19-year-old Jim Palmer's just homer over the right center field fence. If Palmer, Boyer was so close to home plate, if Palmer had pulled that ball, you would have had to pick up Boyer with a spatula. And that was so <laughs> Joe Garagiola. So that was my first major league win, 19 years old. And a home run. And a home run. Wow. Good story. It surprised everybody. And well, the result I, I, of that was ball four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He became an author. That's yes. enough to get a guy to write a book. He quit and wrote a book. <laughs> right. A three ball, one strike count on Nate McLeod. Well, you have to understand, I played for Hank Bauer, and, and we had Don, Don Larson was on that club, Dick Hall, uh, who was, they were all great athletes. Larson, one of the best hitting pitchers in baseball, has that outside corner. And so Hank Bauer had played on all his Yankee teams, five straight world champions. He would let you in a bunting situation on the first strike. Instead of bunting, actually, if you could swing the bat, and I could, 
swing away, and that's how this whole thing evolved. That ball's going to go to first base. It's going to uh, be close and not in time. Uh, you better not hesitate. The Klaus two for four, double and an infield single. One away. The Orioles have one on. Just as we promised earlier in the ball game, Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. Maddie Machado. Four RBIs, two home runs in just his second major league game. Now has four hits, seven at bats, and a little fly ball to center. Kane is out there. He's taken over in center field. Runner halfway. Machado is retired. Second out in the eighth inning. Doesn't keep the fans down, though. Now, interestingly tonight, that young man, Adam Quarter, he is 15 years old from the United Arab Emirates, but he is from Millersville, Maryland. So his dad involved in a lot of uh, U.S. businesses that are over there, and he's back home. We're going to hear from him later on. He has both of those home run balls off Machado that were hit out there to left field, both of them. What do you think? I think he's got good hands. That's I what I think. <laughs> and the pitch will be taken. He did go around on it. Did we see a glove? I don't well, think I don't so. know how he did it. I think they were bouncing around. I don't think he I don't think he caught either of them, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> He's out of energy too. Here is Quintanilla. Quintanilla, a home run single, two for three in the ball game, runner at first base and a two down. Seventeen thousand two hundred and seventy seven. The announced attendance here tonight, 17277. In future years, those who saw Machado with his multi homer game will number somewhere in the hundreds yeah. of thousands. Yeah. Well, it's like my no hitter. I had people, you know, I've had probably 30,000 people. I was your no hitter. Well, I think there were 16,000 here that night. <laughs> and I've signed 30,000 people. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> years ago, I was down in Ocean City or up in Bethany, and I was riding a bike, and I stopped in uh, Thrasher's actually to get a drink. And the guy says, I was your no hitter. I said, Really? And he said, Yeah, I got the ticket in my wallet. I said, Why don't I sign? He said, I don't want to bother you. It was like 17 years later. <laughs> and he's going to bother me? Come on. Yeah, well, especially when he, you offered. Yeah. And the two ball, two strike come. Well, who would be carrying a ticket, a stub? And maybe this will happen with Manny Machado. 17 after a, an event, whether it's tonight or no you hitter may. or whatever. Now, what's the young man? You know he's going to get down to the clubhouse after the ball game and be introduced to Manny Machado, and something will be exchanged there. Well, he might get one of Adam balls. Jones's cars. <laughs> <laughs> Did he go around, check it third? No. <laughs> it remains three. It goes to three and two. Not the Ferrari or the Bentley, but no, the uh, <laughs> one of the lesser models. <laughs> and I have no idea how many cars Adam has. Either. How come? Well, we see. There we go. He's got his jersey on, Jonesy. Why is he taking pictures of somebody else? <laughs> of the seat number. <laughs> it's my ball. <laughs> Here's the three-two delivery off the fists and foul back, and the count uh. stayed three and two. <laughs> We understand that Jared Dyson left with a sprained left ankle, by the way, with Kane taking over in center. Machado hasn't left for any reason. So Kane is out there in center field. We saw Dyson on that last at bat pull up at the plate on what would have been an easy double, but he couldn't run, and it yeah. was the ankle that he turned. And he, it's, well, it's great to see young players like that, that you know, speedster, had a nice night, couple of hits. 3 2 delivery runner going down to third. That's going to be by Mustaka. That's going to be a base hit. Quintanilla has got a three hit ball game two on two down and for the youngster Adam Quarter, who caught both of those baseballs and already we've had a chance to ask him what are the chances you'd get two? Amazing. I, when I got the second one I couldn't even stand my legs were shaking too much. I had to sit down. We've never had the feeling. It was just uh, it was awesome. What would you like to get for Manny you know like as a reward? Getting his game one jersey that would be pretty awesome. Being, getting his sign would be even better. Uh, just need to see what happens. It'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they can handle that. I think they can take care of that. He just called somebody named Boris, apparently. Uh, 
<laughs> Runners at first and second, two down. And here's Nick Marquegas, and the pitch is taken for a strike. Well, Nick needs a soft hit because he's hit nothing but screamers in, in the first two games. And nothing is, to show. Uh, no. Well, he did get an RBI. I mean, you know, we talked about Manny Machado, two home runs, a triple, but he tagged up on a line drive, and uh, he got a run scored, and Nick got an RBI last night. Breaking ball delivered by Tiford will miss. Mark Agus 0 for 3 in the game. Does have a walk. He's 0 for 5 now in the first two ball games. Hitting at 291 on the season. The Orioles batting in the bottom of the eighth, leading at 7 to 1. They've picked up 10 hits now in the game. And for Mark Agus, 287 against left handers on the year. 1 1 delivery to him. That breaking ball is going to be in there for a strike. Yeah, a couple of years ago, hit close to 350 against lefties. And the reason is because he can hit the ball the other way. Still remember Paul O'Neill. I said, how'd you, how do you hit lefty so well after five straight 300 years at, uh, with the Yankees and a batting title? He said, Matty Lee told me hit it to left. There's gold out there. Good lesson there. It's one that goes through the wickets. The runners are going to move up. That ball just scooted right through Perez. Not an easy thing to do and went all the way to the backstop. It'll yeah, be a wild pitch. I think maybe the scoreboard a little different. He blocks this ball. It looks like Miguel Gonzalez is going to uh, leave after eight as everybody's congratulating him. Well, what a game he pitched. Oof. Boy, you hang around long enough as a starting pitcher, you allow your team to add on runs. So, again, early. Two to one lead, three to one, and then that four run sixth inning. What a difference that makes if you're still out there. 2 2 delivery in the year. Kane. He's got it, and that will retire the side. No runs, couple of hits, no errors. Two are left on base. The Orioles three outs away from picking up the win on a big night for Manny Machado and the young man who caught both of his home run balls. Orioles baseball on mass and brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Dodge. See your authorized Dodge dealer and experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test drive or go to dodge.com and check out their powerful lineup. Garrett Dodge Palmer here at Camden Yards. The Orioles looking to even the four game set as they have the seven to one lead in the ball game. Home runs. Couple by Machado. Quintanilla has delivered one. A great performance by Gonzalez with a chance to win it. And Pedro on to try and wrap it up. Yeah, and uh, this is another reason why the bullpen has been that good. Claimed on waivers late last year. I thought we'd just get some kid with a pretty average arm uh, that maybe is all over the place. We got a guy with an above average arm that uh, has pitched about as well as everybody. Ground ball machine. Hard to elevate against him. And then he's done a great job to get to the closer, Jim Johnson. And yeah, Strope will go to work here against Mustakas, who will take the pitch away for a ball. A tremendous job done by Miguel Gonzalez, uh, looking to pick up the win in the ball game. It would be his fourth. 
against two losses on the season. And that pitch is in there for a strike, a career high in innings pitched in the ball game. As for the first time, he goes eight, gives up the one run on six hits, only one walk, and he struck out five. Poe Shaver on the record, the other side, seven runs, seven hits, and five and a third. Boy, it's just amazing some nights. And then Ho Chaver, uh, Luke, uh, maybe two or three pitches, and that makes the difference, especially when you get one run. You just can't make a whole lot of mistakes, even if they happen to be glaring ones because of the home run ball. But pretty typical of what the Orioles do, right? As you mentioned, the extremes. Yeah. Yep. Well, and then also just the fact that when they score runs, it's usually the via the home run, and tonight's no exception. Two ball, two strike count. Nostagas with the 0 for 3 in the ball game, 2 for 7 in the series. Infield shift is on against the left handed hitter, and that'll be fouled back the other way. Take a look at the final line for the Orioles starting. Well, he doesn't go the distance because they don't need him to. And you can see, uh, again, 114 pitches uh, on other occasions, so 103, very efficient. Pitched out of trouble, only the solo home run. Marvelous job. Two ball, two strike count. And that is going to miss outside. So and the count will go to three and two on the leadoff batter here in the ninth inning. And just think about whether it's Gonzalez or Chen. Somebody's got to go out and scout these guys. So the Orioles have done a terrific job of adding players to their 40 man roster that have made a difference. Here's the 3 2 delivery to him and ate him up on them. Yeah, well, that's unfair. You throw 96 to 98, and then you you throw a slider, young hitter. He's got to be looking fastball, as he should. And then watch this one. And he gets on top of it. And this is a slider. And a slider looks like a fastball till right about then, and you just swing over it. Butler's had an 0 for 3 in the ballgame. Gonzalez, a great job against him. Jammed him for a couple of ground ball outs and got a fly ball to right field. Butler up with one down. And the pitch will catch the outside corner for a strike. Would it be fair to say that last night the Butler did it and tonight not the case? Yes. There you go. There you go. Right back to started the with a rhyme. That's how we started. From the land of Nod. What are we going to do tomorrow? Oh one. As Buck says we throw the bats out and see what happens. Same thing we do up here. <laughs> oh, 2 count. The game will tell us. Oh, 2 with one away. I'm sure Billy. It's been a big strike zone all night, and I'm sure Billy Butler's going. Wow. To Bill Welke, he doesn't need any help. And there's a. There, there we go. Is. There's the quick pitch. Well, I'll tell you what. The first two. I don't know if Bill Castro, the bullpen coach, had anything to do with this, but uh, Pedro Strop has learned that pick. Quick pitch that uh, Joel Peralta down in Tampa Bay does. Let's update you on the AT&T player of the game voting so far. Text in your vote, A, B, or C, 31826 results. There you go. On the O's Extra Post Game Show. Well, yeah, the, he's the second youngest guy to hit a home run, I think. Is that the story? Yeah, okay. You want us to add your name to the go. list? Is that what you want? Yeah. Huh? No. no. Oh! He's a real player. Yes. I, I was just a Yeah, right. Machado night. And did it on a day when the home runs have been heard from before, back in 1963. Luke Powell became the first Oriole to have three home runs in the same game. That was on this date in 63. In this ball game, Machado in his second game has his first multi-homer ball game in his professional career. 0-1 delivery. Kind of a surprise. This has been a homer day in Orioles history because in 1957 on this date, Mickey Mantle was the first player to clear the center field hedge at Memorial. It's like 460. 460. It's like, yeah. I mean, that's uh, what I, they I, measured it. They did? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what Mick did. Here's a 1-1 delivery on the way. Oh! oh. Strobe yeah. knocks it down. Final out. He got it. And yeah. it looks like he's all right. Well, former infield. Take that, big boy. And the Orioles with a dominating win as they put away a 7-1 to one victory. It'll be Gonzalez, the winner, 4-2. and two. Hoshaver suffers the loss. He is 7-10. and ten. And Manny Machado has a night that will be long talked about, and we're going to talk with him about it when we come back. <laughs> 